Flight Boss, bitch, you know, for sure. You're now listening to the mind of an Antares Moon, Flight Boss, the Archangel Uriel, and I'm here to carry out God duties and motherfucking responsibilities. And right now, we're going to talk about houses with no planets. That's right, motherfucking houses with no stars in them. Now, I get this question a lot. So, we know, let's break this down first. We know planets, stars, whatever you want to call them, right? They're lights, they're influences. So, your planets is your planets, your stars, your lights, your influences. So, if you don't have, if, if you don't have a planet or a star in a house, don't look at it like, okay, I'm looking at my chart. I don't have no planets here. No, though, these are your planets. Because when you go look at the, the planets that is in a house, right, the planet you're looking at is your planet, your star. So when you go look at that planet, that star, it has a degree. It ha it's, a, it's in a sign, even if it's not in the same sign house. You know what I'm saying? Your houses have degrees, depending on what kind of um, house chart you're utilizing. But, you know, your houses line up at a certain... It's, it's always good to, to do any chart that has degrees. When you do a chart system that all houses land on the same degrees, that could be false. Because we know the day gradually moves. So the, the day is showing you, the sun is showing you firsthand, all the planets showing you firsthand that everything has a transition, everything gradually moving. So if you come across a house system that all the houses start at zero degrees or all, all the houses at, that, that kind of doesn't make sense. You see what I'm saying? You have to put things in perspective to kind of really understand what's going on. So if you if you go on, but it's always good to go with a house system that that actually has degrees also, which is what I call what the, the place it this one. I, I don't I don't I'm not good with names and things of that nature, but you know for the most part the, the, the P one the house the the word that start with the P place it is or whatever like that. You know the equal house system is kind of that kind of. Uh, you know, it doesn't really make sense now, but look when we so for the most part say you got a planet Say for an example. I'm gonna you I'm gonna use me for an example um, My moon sign is eight degrees Sagittarius right now since I'm a Leo ascendant right now I'm a 17 degrees Leo ascendant so When when we get to the degrees matching my houses my the eight degrees Sagittarius moon doesn't reach the degree that sat the, uh, of the degree of the house Sagittarius. Now the the Sagittarius house is after eight degrees. So my moon falls into the fourth house, which is the Scorpio house, along with Pluto. So off the bat, this is this is how that happens for people who don't know how that happens. It's just because your degree of the planet doesn't reach the degree of the house. So this is what you know. Vedic and and tropical. This is all the same. People who separate it is is they not and then like forcefully try to separate it. They're not understanding the actuality of it. It's the same system, just going by two different clocks. One clock is going by the clock as 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 the perspective from Earth, which you're on Earth. So that's the clock that you're supposed to look at for your with the energy you're giving off. And then you have a clock that's going from the position of how the sun see things from the sun position and this where this what you would look at as far as Vedic or let's not even say the sun this the, pers the perspective from the positions that's outside of you so it'd be like where things really are at the the actual space and location that the stars have moved in so where the stars at now what location that they at now but you're on earth right now so where they where they at, where they may be at now based upon where earth is at they're gonna look like they're here so you see what I'm saying? So based upon us having both of these understandings that make mankind consciously aware of a higher consciousness. You see what I'm saying? But the moment you start trying to argue and dis deficiate the two, then you're losing the aspect of things. You see, you're, you're not understanding. You know? But for the most part, when we want to talk about the houses, because I'll be getting into some other shit, but it's all still correlated to the same shit. You know why? Because it's... Um, Ooh, sorry about the sorry printer. As far as the uh, I just kicked my motherfucking printer. As far as the houses, now the stars, your planets. These are your stars, so these are your influences. So when we look at the houses, how the twelve houses, these are each area of your life, the each twelve locational areas of your life. So they represent a, a different space of your life, a different portion, a different experience. So if you don't have a planet or a star in a house, that means you're not the one giving off any influences. You're not consciously paying attention to that area of life. You're not, 
you're not giving any giving any of your own energy to, uh, con consciously to that. This is things that's happening subconsciously in that house, and you you're gonna experience it no matter what. But you're not like the actual cause of the things that's going on in that house. See what I'm saying? You're not the in you're not the primary influence of that house. You're not the primary influence of that experience of that area of life. So if you don't have no, if you don't have no planets in the third house, you're not the primary influence. You're not the primary attention. You're not the primary um, energetic source of your surroundings or the things that you're familiar with, whether that's a person, place, or thing, or a gift, talent, or a trait, or something you have learned along the way in your close proximities based upon a friend or a neighbor or whatever. So you see what I'm saying? You're not the primary focus. You don't exert a lot of energy in there. So when you don't have a planet and a house, uh, the best thing to do is start to get into your house lords and that's how you activate that house without letting other people places and things take power and control over you in that house because it's, out, it's kind of pretty much out of your hands you have to force yourself in that house aka force your influences aka force your planets and if your planet is somewhere else then when you force it in there your planet is going to your star is going to be doing a bunch of shit from where it's from to do things in that house and a lot of times that may be messed up that's why if you got squares aka perons that kind of let you know what um now a per, now squares we know what squares is, but a Paran is actually ident when you're focusing on one planet. So a Paran will be trying to understand what characteristics this planet have because of the square influences. See, when we talk about the squares, we talk about each square. When we talk about a Paran, we have to focus on one planet, one star, and see how it's correlating and how it's handling itself based upon the square the planets that squaring it. So this is where we get to Perons. Now for and, and the interstellar the um the motherfucking asterisms will be like the constellations, the constellations, the nashatras, the uh the, the the back and supporting system, the backdrop, the influences that came from or, or the group of stars that actually came together to create the star that's in front of that that's in front of them that that shit had to get filtered through that to come to you as a smaller portion to them you know what I'm saying so this is why you are a sign that you are now see that so when you have to force yourself in this house this is why it's good to know thyself because a lot of times say something happens in a house that you don't got no planet or star in so things happen chaotic based upon it. now let me let me say this first also when we talk about the houses this could be something you participate in or someone else or another person, place, or thing participate in. But it don't matter what, you're going to experience that energy. Um, you're going to experience those energetic frequencies. Now, the planet makes sure it is the influences that you add to it. But for the most part, this is just the, influence, the energy that's already there. See what I'm saying? So for an example, like second house, you got fire in the second house. Then the energetic experiences is things that's dealing with vision, seeing expressions you know what I'm saying action that's that's what's being seen in your second house the house of values the people places and things that you value what you have to offer to the world um, whether that's internally or externally and planting seeds and self-esteem that's the second house so if you have fire here right all, the things that you value is, is not material is, is absorbed in to um, ways of feeling and ways of seeing about things but see that's not necessarily good for the second house because the second house is material it is your value system the people places and things that you value the job that you have these are physical things that's outside of you see getting in the fire could put you into your own world here and burn bridges where burn bridges between people that you may value water here is not necessarily good for water to be here but you can balance it because the emotional um water is how you deal with the emotions and feelings and, and, and intuition also but psyche intuition soaking in so you can actually understand the full totality of what's getting ready to be manifested um, so you know as far as water being here right you're not you're not valuing material again you're valuing vibes and emotions and feelings and, and based upon how people feel so a lot of times you could value a person just because of how they make you feel but this person could be the most manipulated snakest person and, and robbing you fucking blind so that's why it's not good to have water here um, you know air here air um, becomes airheaded here so you know when it comes to your values and what you have to offer to the world yeah you know how to communicate it and relate it well you know what I'm saying this makes you very creative also so uh, you can utilize your words and have this to offer to the world. Be a musician, a poet, all kind of shit. Um, 
a, a psychologist, a person who knows how to formulate their words to help other people in their life. So it works better than the water and fire, but for the most part, this is where it may lack at also. So air, you're, you're experiencing a lot of situations from others or yourself. So it could be a situation where it's like too much thought and too much communication is going on. So you may value more communication and, and than action. So, you know, it may be people in your life that talk a lot, right? And then they make you feel like you can value them, but a lot of times they never they never live up to the hype or something like that. Now, Earth here is very good for Earth to be here because uh, Earth is thinking and being practical. So a lot of times you that you think and be practical about the things you value. You know how to practically make sense out of if this is the right thing to value or not. Uh, a, lot, a lot of times you're going to value material to, to help gain stability in your life. So, you know, it goes into a lot of areas. But my whole point of saying this is because this, this could be what you are experiencing or what others are bringing into your life. So... You have to when you look at the house lords. Uh, if you don't have a if you don't have a planet or a star in this house, right? Look at the house lord. Now the house lord would be whatever sign you have in that house. The planet that rules that sign. So for the most part, say you have, um, say you have, uh, um, say you have Virgo in the fourth house. Mercury rules Virgo. Now, Earth rules Virgo also, but let's, for the sake of this universal astrology right here, let's just say Mercury. Now, Mercury you, uh, rules Virgo. But let's say Mercury is in, um, let's just say Mercury is in the seventh house. So, it's squaring also, but Mercury is in the seventh house. So, for the most part, you know, your, your fourth house Lord is in the seventh house. So, in order for you to activate this house in the right way, because here's how you act, this, this is what happens negatively when you don't have a planet in the house, right? And you don't know thyself. So, you don't know what's going on. So, when a chaotic situation happened into a house that you, that you had no control over, or that you, or, or a lot of times you didn't create the chaotic moment, or then you're not an influence to, to, to make the chaotic, chaotic moment take shape and form and structure to it. So, what happens here is, a lot of times you will utilize your natural planets anyway. So say say you got Mars, right? Um, so say something in that house made you angry. So it's going to activate Mars. So you start to utilize your Mars, your intent, willpower, passion, and motivation, right? But let's say Mars is in the first house. Here's the other square to the fourth house, right? So you're going to be utilizing influences that square the fourth house. So it don't matter how angry you get to utilize to help that to help the fourth house. What happens here is you you need to learn how to do that better. So, but if you don't know thyself, you're gonna be taking a bunch of personal issues. You're allowed to take it, apply your personal affairs, apply too much of your personality to the first house, and you're gonna be doing it aggressively and things of that to the aggressively to the fourth house. And if and you and then you're gonna create situations that's even worse. And you didn't have to do that if you know thyself. Now, how you do this effectively is. Um, knowing, knowing thyself. So knowing where your house lord is at. So like I said, if the fourth house is Virgo, then Mer Mercury rules it. And if Mercury is in the seventh house, even though this is a square, this is the square you're supposed to use. Not, not if you get angry. Not the, not, the, uh, not the activation of Mars. See what I'm saying? Now, Mercury is in the seventh house. So what happens here is the fourth house lord is in the seventh house. So the more you take the fourth house things, which is private, home, domestic issues, wherever you gain, how you gain emotional stability in, in the private area, right? And apply it to the seventh house, to your relationships in some type of way, or, ma or make these issues more relatable, and, or make it more of how you relate to people, places, and things. You may have a certain domestic issue or private issue or a certain family member that that constructed the way how you relate to the world. Utilize that. Make that part of how you relate to people. You may be able to relate to somebody emotionally based upon one of their domestic issues or something like that. And you can help them gain emotional stability amongst themselves based upon how you relate to them, based upon your own domestic issues. You see what I'm saying? And make it part of your relationships. Make your home, family, uh, uh, your uh, domestic issues or wherever you gain emotional stability at. Make sure that your relationships is part of that. Part of that transition. And you're going to see more success than rejection and more doors open up with it and more keys to open up doors in, in both houses. You're going to see a brighter fourth house and a brighter seventh house. And then you're going to start to understand that, okay, whenever I get angry, leave that, leave my, 
leave this separate leave Mars separate because all the influences and energetic frequencies that's coming with Mars is going to be from things in my first house so I might get too personal or I might add too many personal issues or I might try to apply and burn bridges with too many personal affairs so if I get angry with these fourth house aspects again I know not to I know to temper down Mars and to use more of my thinking more analyzing because the frequencies that's coming with that is from my seventh house and my seventh house is actually the Lord of my fourth house you see what I'm saying you start to understand things from a broader perspective so you know if you don't have a so if you don't have no planet stars in a house all that means is you're, you're just not consciously adding any influences in that house so you're just go, you're just experiencing things that's happening in that house now the planets the houses that you do have planets and stars in these is houses that you are affecting the people places and things in you're creating the chaotic moments or you're creating the shape and form and even though it's still like all the other houses you're still going to experience the sign of that house aka the frequency vibrations of that house no matter what you're going to experience what's going on no matter what, but you hold some influence and you owe some part take into that if you have a star or a planet, a star planet in that house. If you have a planet in that house, you you add to it, whether it's negative or positive. But the, the planets you don't have, these are, this, this, the, I mean, the houses that don't have any, these are just things that just take place anyway. So the better you have to learn how to construct, there's like, there's no focus on these houses. So there's these things happening to make you focus on it. So the better you, so how to get grip with, the, how to become, not how to get grips because that's another video. How to become an influence in that house, whether you create chaotic moments or you try to gain structure in that house. How you even become an influence of that house is by utilizing the house lords and looking at that house parans, aka the influences, the sec the, the the squares and the oppositions. Now when we get to the sextiles and trines, you do these naturally. This is why I say when we talk about the houses, houses, when we talk about houses, period, the planets and everything and the house the way the house system is correlated. Sextiles and trines play out more negatively because look sextiles create opportunities trines is your gifts so the, so in the houses these are something you're naturally doing see when we talk about the first house right the 11th and the third house is always going to be the sextile you see what i'm saying the fifth and the ninth house is always going to be the trine so you're always going to and, and then the seventh house is always going to be the um the obstacle or or what or the attraction what, what attracts actually also creates friction to to tear apart same things attract same thing breaks apart once it get wear and tear and if you don't develop nothing to the the to sustain that wear and tear then it's not good but see you can do that with the second house the second house the twelfth and the, and the fourth is always going to be the sex tiles you see what I'm saying the sixth and the tenth is always going to be the trines so what happens when you got a gift look at it like a video game once you didn't beat that game so many times, it don't matter how good that game is, you're not going to want to play it as much. So you may procrastinate. So with your tries, your gifts, you procrastinate. So that's a bad thing when it comes to your areas of life, your houses, because you may procrastinate as shit that you may need to get off your ass and do. So a lot of times your tries may, may take a person, place, or thing to set fire up under your ass to get up and do what you naturally here to do. That, that you already can do. Just do it, motherfucker. You see what I'm saying? Um... So, uh, uh, and, the, and the people, places, and things that play the positions may filter out through what planet or star you have. You see what I'm saying? Now, um, and then the sextile create opportunities. So you may be passing up all kind of opportunities because, you, because you, you're you already in the nature of knowing that's an opportunity. That's like a person that grew up, here's an example. That's like a person who grew up in a family business, right? But the, um, but they don't necessarily dive and take it serious because they know it's always there. So they do a bunch of other shit, stumble and fall. Uh, and a lot of times, they may wait till it's too late. So they can't never take the inheritance of the family business because they wait too long. So they, they, they end up becoming the junkie kids. The kids that ain't know what to do. And they went off in drugs and killed themselves and shit like that. You see what I'm saying? Because that's the sex house. The op your house in your areas of life, that's a bad thing. Because if you're sitting back just letting opportunities pass just because you, you know it's already there to take, you're not going to take it. You're going to procrastinate. So, But the squares and oppositions is good because the squares is the learning processes. That's the key thing in life. To learn. Gain wisdom. So your squares, that's good for the houses. And then your oppositions. Obstacles. Relationships, how you relate and bounce off. You need that in order to have any kind of life. A business, supply and demand. 
if you're not relating to anything outside of you, how are you going to have any business? How are you going to even sustain yourself in the world in any kind of way? Amongst a, amongst a billion things that's outside of you, from you just being a one thing. You see what I'm saying? So, for the most part, you need us, opposition. This so it play out as good things. Anytime you get, anytime you learn something, or anytime you overcome an obstacle, it feel good, don't it? Cause you learned something in life, you overcame something in life. So that that's showing you your in your houses that carry good frequency vibrations. The oppositions and the sextiles and the trines and, and um, yeah, the oppositions. I mean the oppositions and the squares. And then the sextiles and the trines in your areas of life is, plays out that shit that you don't even care about. You know what I'm saying? Now. On a on a flip side, when we just talking about when we just we're we're not talking about the houses no more. We're just talking about your planets and then your planetary alignments. Then it's the other way around. You see what I'm saying? The the squares and oppositions work as blockages from your true self. Like the squares and oppositions is things that's happening outside of you, influences that you're getting and receiving from others, and things you may need to learn from. You see what I'm saying? So that could be like a blockages to something that you truly want to do. And then the six thousand trines is actually positive. When we get to your just planets and planet alignments, because the trines and the sex, the trines and the sex house is the energies you give off. The trines is your gifts, so you do your gifts, and other people pick it up as squares and oppositions or sex house and trines. And then the sex house, your opportunities. So this could play out as outside of you also, but for the most part, it's like you are participating in it, a participant, because the things that's on your mind and that you do. When that causes friction with your the outside elements, it creates portals and circumstances and situations that play out in opportunities that may show into things that you want to do in life or or not want to do. So sex styles create opportunities to, for negative and positive. So, but it's like you are participating in it because of what's on your mind and what you do on a day to day basis and what you're manifesting. So. You know, that's a good thing. The sex towers work as a support system, a friendly system. Now, the, the conjunction could play out as all four. <laughs> if you got a conjunction, you know what I'm saying, it play out as, and even in the, uh, the houses, if you got a planet actually conjuncting the actual house. I mean, the house is a little different, but when we talk about the, the planets, a conjunction play out as all of them. The conjunction could play out as an opposition, a sextile, a, um, a, a trine, and you see what I'm saying? An in conjunction. So it play out. It plays out as all of them. It, just, it got the power. But what comes? What comes? Great power comes great responsibility. So don't be too power and controlling in that area or whatever planet is um, conjuncting. And but don't be too passive because you know better. But yeah, that's your houses. So when you don't have a planet in a house. When you don't have a star in the house, you're not consciously putting any energetic influence in that house consciously. So you just have to handle it, handle when things happen in that house the best way you can in that area of life. And how you do that is understanding your house lords and understanding the piran of that house. What planets uh, is is actually angling that house? What planets is angling that house? And, and that's going to modify, that's going to help modify how you can kind of interact with that house. How you can interact with the, with the area of life you have no control over, and then and then uh, and then also when we get to um, yeah, and that's how you look at houses with no stars in it. Flight boss, bitch, air. And anytime you have a um, a stellium, that's just another word for a motherfucking stellar event. It's a whole bunch of stars in a building, whole bunch of stars in a house, whole bunch of stars in that house. That whole bunch of influences and lights and whole bunch of things taking place in that area of life. Whole bunch of different influences and reactions and and shit going on in that area of life. That's what that means. And I and you could break that down in all kind of metaphors. I just gave you the simplest way how to understand it's a motherfucking stellar event when you got a stellium in one of your houses. So your house is an area of life and in that area of life if you got a stellium there a stellar event there's a lot of fucking shit going on in that area a lot of ups and downs a lot of woos and woes a lot of wanting to accomplish but can't accomplish a lot of see a lot of seeing other people accomplish shit in that area and, and, and doing worse shit than you and but throughout it all you got a whole you end up understanding a whole bunch of different perspectives and influences to the point that you can make it one big gumbo pot and be the most mass murderer in that motherfucking area of life aka I mean the most successful person in that area of life it might just take time for you cause you're cursed and you may have did it in a previous life and you're here to learn other ways to how to do that that's how the stellium worked and Saturn and shit but throughout it all you end up gaining the most prosperity from it and, and if you stick with it flight boss bitch goddamn air eee.